Sandra had some diamond jewelry that she wanted to combine into one ring. After talking with us for a couple of hours, we landed on this beautiful freeform design. We'll make the ring in wax and use the lost wax casting process to create the freeform design. We'll set each diamond separately and then weld it to the ring after it's cast in gold. Here we've made a grid to ensure that we'll cut off wax and grind off wax equally on all four sides. The lost wax casting process starts with carving a wax that will surround with plaster of Paris in a steel cylinder. Once the plaster dries, we'll put the cylinder in an oven for over 14 hours so the wax can completely burn out. When we remove the cylinder from the oven, we pour the molten gold into it and out comes a gold replica of what we made in wax. You'll see us pour the gold later in the video. Now we'll grind more wax out to create the freeform. No, your eyes haven't deceived you. We started with blue wax and now it's purple. We carved the wax three times because we didn't like how the first two came out. This one's purple because, well, we ran out of blue wax. We used a one millimeter wide drill bit to create the finer lines of the ring. Sandra wanted to see the wax before we cast it up in gold. So we attached each diamond to the wax by heating it up and putting it in place. Here's the last one. Pouring the gold is a little dangerous. We hold a saw in one hand to prevent the gold from overshooting the steel cylinder. We grab the crucible, which now holds the gold in a liquid state at about 1700 degrees, and pour it into the opening. Here's the raw casting, pure 14 karat white gold. Now we'll spend hours filing, sanding, and polishing. Try not to be distracted by the band-aids on my thumbs. That's what happens when a jeweler helps his son build a shed over the weekend. I should stick to what I know. Now, we couldn't file and sand in between all the narrow openings. So, we'll put it in what's called a magnetic tumbler. Thousands of steel pins are pulled around the tank at such high speeds that they polish every nook and cranny of whatever you put in there. It'll be in there a couple of hours. While that's tumbling, we can take time to perfect the settings of the diamonds.
Sandra wanted a mill grain or coin edge finish on the entire top of the ring. This tool has a steel wheel that actually makes that happen, if you press hard enough. It's hard to see the coin edge finish, but that's why the top of the ring looks jagged. Now we're using one of my favorite tools, the laser welder. By pressing a foot pedal, we send a beam of intense heat that actually melts metals together. You'll see puffs of smoke and bursts of light. Isn't it incredible? All the diamonds are welded on now, but we want to make sure they're never coming off. We dip the ring in a solution that prevents the gold from discoloring while on fire. We take a ball of solder and put it where the setting meets the ring. Now this is the tricky part. It won't work unless the ring and the setting are exactly the same temperature. But the ring is thick and the setting is thin. That's what makes it tricky. When that ball of solder disappears into the crack, you know it worked. Nice. This is called rhodium. We plate the ring with rhodium because white gold starts out as 24 karat yellow gold, so it's still a little yellowish. Rhodium is as white as platinum, so it gives the ring a true white color. And now my favorite part. After all that hard work, Sandra gets to wear a ring like no one else on earth. 